Thank you so much, Rod. That was great. So I'll, st I'll start things off uh, with a poem from Feria. Um, I think you introduced it quite amazingly, so I won't add much more. Uh, they're mostly long poems um, that largely investigate how we, uh, like the private and the public space, interact, particularly in a park. And the one I'm going to share with you is called Momiji Garden. And uh, it's, it's based on a part of this park where, um, well, this park was partly used for the Japanese internment during World War II. And so how do you have this place? And, and on this site that was later uh, built a garden to honor or sell, you know, both honor Japanese culture, but mourn this history. So um, I try to think about how, how do you honor and how do you mourn, you know, uh, something and how do you get this from from a landscape, uh, particularly when, you know, the history is not your personal history, but it's there in the landscape. So, and um, the poem is written in what I like to think of, they're all bonsais. Nice. They're all kind of like <laughs> little bonsais on the page. So. Animal a leaf in silence. Knowledge sustains a privilege briefly in a barn sweating straw of our straw. Mother calls, how you're fine, we're fine. Yet the splatter of rain on these maples young with life makes us. Garden has only a vague memory of itself. In a gurgling stream, fish stumble into war. Relieved into a block of stone, a few words commemorate. No horsing around beyond this point. On a bridge, staring at goldfish. A man inconsolably wailing. A bordered word nationing them. Us, no. da daffodils, a bonsai. Here is a garden of violence. With onslaught we enter, not cautious, not blind. We eat, we drink, we tear, we sleep, we animate into basic needs. We beast. A path curves the pond into distances. Foreign into foreignness, doubly words build thin walls. To what make a human takes one word. We sit on a bridge staring at goldfish and a bonsai of daffodils. To love doubly, Poland, asylum of bees, here is a garden of violence. You and I are they and they are us and who are them, who are we and I and are just pronouns. Caretaker shuffles, talks to birds with his hands in these walls that surround. Heat, buzz, and tire screech. Air and gunshot and horses' hooves and the gravel whirr of machines. Water in the estuary of his hands. No animals, just an empty barn, willingly in September, willingly red. The book of mourning is a book of mourning, scribbled into its margins an epic. At the bottom of the pond lives a building Culprit and hero, there is a quest, a voyage to the underworld, a war. And though in the end, peace is restored, herohood is not. Rain, torrential invalid, weeks, weak soils, wet of weeks, musty wet straw, invalids, the weeks of wet. 
inside the straw, the three. Prime number not divisible by anything but itself. The tear, fragile, cascading off the cheek into a hand's abyss. Tear multiplied often by itself. Tear also a prime number. Tear not a symbol, but a tear multiplied often by itself. The three of the tear not divisible. Inside the three, an animal. Writing the letter of needs, animals, the animal. Easted from this western pond, easted past the stones, symbols. We collect and are collected into we, unresolved, we breach. A lantern between us, snow, an animal between us. Us, simply pronouns. To take the tear into its very sadness strolls my attempt among the borrowed scenery. With my eyes, in your eyes, I'm less vulnerable to the elements. Artery of the palm faces the palm's face. Condensing air with breath, such desire can create, object itself. Time unresolves us, terrestrial. I don't know if this is on anymore. No? <coughs> the microphone is probably not on. Hello, hello. Okay. I'm just going to start as well with a few pieces from Okadoro from a book that's my own work before Juan and I read together. And um, Rod's introduction made me remember that there's a, a section of poems, actually I never read from it, called Windfall in this book that are uh, windfallen words. They're kind of like apples falling on the ground. Anyways, here's, here's one of them. This is one of those pseudo-linguistic, I guess. Um, sound poems, if you only understand English. Gilt iron, brass, mannerism, pau santo, ferro dourado, ouro gravado, latão, mannerismo, rosewood, mannerism, gilt iron, brass. <coughs> and I'll read just uh, four more small pieces from, from this book. This book, some of the lines of the poems, all the, the last lines in every poem are the names of a, of a Galician medieval troubadour and also of an archival reference. They're just written like all the other lines of the poems, though these are my poems. I kind of, I don't think of them as translations. Well, they aren't translations and they aren't really versions or alterations. They're more swallowings, like I swallowed the Galician. Portuguese medieval repertoire. And this is what came out. Oh God, what ache to suffer, to have the great good of loving one to whom I dare not speak, of the great hurt that I do bear, I do not dare to say a thing, of the great hurt that I do bear, ever in such ache I'll be and live. I love that lady and can tell her all but of the thing I do not dare to speak. My wish it is to tell her all that I should not increase my grief, but I do not dare to speak to her of Alex V1 or VI 1110, 1 Iris Carpancho. From a different type of poem in the uh, in that in the in the book. In this book here. I am unhoused outside the door in love. Mother, 
Can your own child have love another more than she loves you? Light candles for me in the sanctuary that the arches may light up and flicker. I am in love. Mother, I am in love. 774, number 831, Pedro de Ponte. What is an archive? Grief. What is a book? Trespass. A book's where breath seal is broken, breaks. The anatomic structure of a body is not allowed to occur, but must. What is spectral in the songbooks is the breath. This breath that leaves the body. <coughs> breath, not between, but inside words. C'est la part un fantôme. Et que taille tarde becomes et quand elle a tarde. Et quand elle tarde. Et quand elle a tarde. Visually, she sent herself into apoplexia, dyslexia, until do and go looked identical to her. Juan's going to help me with this one. There's some of the, the poems here where I was working with some text in French, which I condensed, stole, altered from Jacques Daddy Does Mad Archive, actually. And I was trying to put them in relation to these poems of courtly love, falsely translated by me, eaten and swallowed by me and D Derrida likewise. And so um, I, I sold them across the English text, the French text. So one's going to read the French text. So, somehow or other, I don't know how she's going to do that. But she claims she's going to. One day I saw my lovely one yearned to speak to her, the so great good I of her did yearn, and how I am held meek and prisoner by her love. C'est la part et fantôme. And I so clearly, clearly saw that I could not speak a thing to her. Of all I had in my own heart, she made to fall apart. Comme cela paraît, malheureusement. As if I could have spoken to her and Aussi, yearned to tell her then. De and I so clearly saw her fear, and such is how I saw her, that she heard me going mad in this. Voilà de quelle violence, étrangeté malgré les assurances. To speak to her, of how she causes me much ache, and I so clearly saw that she would not have me for hers. A Avant great, de revenir à cette fatalité, a great truth I'll tell to you. Je voudrais. My ache is the sole good I'll bear, and the wish to tell her so. Je voudrais. And I so clearly saw. CXCI 175.2282, number 342. Roy Paez de Ravenna. And now we'll read a little bit from this uh, book, Expeditions of the Chimera, that uh, gathers together some crazy things. There's a, a quote on the back that really says it all from Otilia Acacia, who made an editorial comment on this book. Expeditions of the Chimera is simply a joyful romp in poetry and a thoroughly disreputable book. <laughs> why she said that, but anyways. I went out on the balcony and watered the flowers. These are aleatory lines added anywhere in the poem without warning. I went out on the balcony and watered the flowers. Your instance hovering bird added anywhere in the poem without warning. And came home and went directly to the garden. During which the sky broke and released a tremendous amount of which rain. Which I've never seen in Time's garden. We'll slowly unfasten and we'll go field words from the garden. Glass doves. Your eyes and the way your hair fell and just wanting to keep this moment. Rhubarb is utterly changed for me now. First the field tomorrow where we could bring a gambon. In the sky to us now a garden and field. Then you can pick rhubarb from this very garden. For every stained petal you extinguished a torch. It's, a be it's beautiful this doubling, this feeling and dislodging of time. And all our markings and intents. I identity. went into the garden and put and poles around the tomatoes. To lean on. I am ever so tentative in the sky when giving you to the garden and field.
It appears that in the 1990s, Elisa Sampedrin spent time in Romania, where she fell in with the poems of Nikita Stănescu and attempted, with no knowledge of Romanian, to translate them into English, which she was also unfamiliar with. The resulting debauchery was immediately and later unpublishable, naturally. However, Stanescu's poems do have a home in Canada uh, now um, in occupational sickness, so it at last makes sense to unearth some of San Pedrin's poems. Translated by one of his occupational sickness, Nikita Stanescu. Aaron Morey, a a Canadian poet, who had previously endured San Pedrin's meddling in her own little theaters, has examined the translation in light of San Pedrin's known history and insists it is impossible that they be hers. Not hers. <laughs> we attribute them to her anyhow, believing Mori wrong in her archaeography. <laughs> now, about Elisa's attempt at translation... <laughs> just say that in my It's wrong. <laughs> about Elisa Sempedrin's attempts at translation, one critic wrote, the line, the poetic line, confounds geometry. It becomes lineage, which is to say older and younger at once. (laughs) The Roost, translated by E.S. from Nikita Stanescu. I was out in the field. My pen stopped working. I had to write with a straw. Where they'd torn up the rails behind the sewing factory, I found a field. In the field, when wind rises, the grass clangs. I sat down on a concrete boulder in the field. A mouse treads to the lip of its tunnel and pushes my boot. And the sky is a roost for birds. Now, because Elisa Sempedrin erroneously translated in the piece you just heard, a poem by Nikita Stanescu <coughs> that had not been written in the first place. I, as Stanescu's translator, was obliged to translate backward and create the original Stanescu poem you're about to hear. <laughs> I'll read it. It's called Prajina Kotetsur, Restored to Romanian by O.A. from the English of E.S. <coughs> Eram pe teren, stiloul n-a mai vrut să scrie, am fost silita să scriu cu un pai. Unde au smus șinele, în spate la fabrica de tricotaje, am găsit un câmp. Pe câmp, când vântul se întățește, iarba dangănă. Am așezat un bolovan de beton în câmp. Un șoarece pășește până la buza tunelului său și îmi împinge cizma. Și cerul e un coteț de vrăbi. The problem with Avisilicare's translation backwards in time into the original Romanian of San Pedrin's translation entitled The Roost, which I read to you very properly earlier, is that it renders... San Pedrin's purported translation accurate, and we all know that San Pedrin does not know Romanian. Fortunately, San Pedrin herself appears to have remedied this by translating the now original Romanian of Avasilico Stanescu. <laughs> Codeful. Translated by E.S. from the Romanian. I felt my foot silhouette at the root of a scream. That's wrong. <laughs> Frost silting a scream with a stick Where smoke signals spit on the fabric of tractors There's gas in a camp The camp's foot, when its vantage points interest you Dangles grasses Me, I'm seized up in camp One foot in a block of cement a soreness of pastures a buzz in the tarsal tunnel till the chasm impinges. I'm sealed in a coat of rage. <laughs> Prank 145 by me. Put your best foot forward. Stilettos in the hand are a kind of saw. False stilettos scraping the planks. 
can make a small city in a textile factory <laughs> cook with camp gas and the camp a huge pot of intestines stirred with a spoon <laughs> quick put your foot in the door and get your bets in patience in tunnels makes the bones soar over the abyss and the sky a car crash Well, maintaining her insistence that San Pedrin's translations are impossible and are in fact not hers, Moray over here, claims this to be the original poem and refutes any resemblance to San Pedrin's work, though allows for the possibility of coincidence between her original poem and Avasikoy's translation of the translation of Stanesco's poem, if you follow my drift. Now, for my part, I assert this to be an accurate translation into English of Stanescu's Romanian and not an original poem, as she claims. In defense of this view, I can only say that a car crash means a roost for birds. <laughs> can I share this? Puneți piciorul perfect înainte. You put me in the perfect instant. În mână, tocurile cui sunt un fiel de fierăstrău. This morning, my slipper with its saint felt out the window. False, tocuri cui zgârie podeaua. False, the slipper with its agrarious footstep. <laughs> Poți construi un mic oraș într-o fabrică de tricotaje, găti la foc de tabără. Maybe you built a wee ore in a text factory. The cat tipped it onto the table. În tabără, o lingură amestecă intestinele într-o oală uriașă. On the table, language mixed intestinal between all that curiosity. Grăbește-te! Proptește piciorul în ușă și pune pariu. I can't say it that fast. Grab it. Protest pictorial in America if it so appears. Antunele, răbdarea face oasele să zboare deasupra abisului. In a tunnel, rub faces with an oasis that soar over the abyss. Și cerul, o bușitură de mașini. And imagine, and I'm really imagine it. Ow! The pop rattle of machines. Well, I was, I was thinking about it, to stress the notion that an original ever existed or could exist, but admits. When pressed, and I'm going to press her now, <laughs> I admit <laughs> that a translation is an original and that she has access to the only true translation of Moray's poem, which you just heard her restore into the language of Stanescu. Well, at least we have the original now, and we're relieved. <laughs> However, the original of the copy is also here originated in translation by Elisa Sempedrin, who still does not know any Romanian, but won't desist. <laughs> now, we don't know how E.S. got hold of the work, unless she found it in a book by Stanescu where it hadn't at that moment been written. <laughs> Yet the unruliness has a ring of truth to it. It cuts to the bone. If the shoe fits, scare it. <laughs> a revision of jocularity number 145 by E.S. Well, what I have here is actually felt had now, translated by E.S. from the English of E.M. <laughs> I think that's all right. <clears throat> okay, never mind that, okay? <laughs> you put me in the perfect instant. I felt my foot, my slipper with its saint felt out the window. That's moving. Stilettos in the hand are as good as a saw. <laughs> she can tunnel and soar bones while the chasm impinges. Quick, put her foot in the door. Get my bets in. Right. Foolish, the slipper with its agrarious footstep, a wee ore out of a text factory. On the table, language mixed intestinal between all that curiosity. No wonder the cat tiptoes silhouette at the root of a screen. Hmm. You can magnetize salt. <laughs> With your pulse, I'm perfectly inane. It's right here. 
The tongue's just the far end of the intestine. They're both unruly. And what tunnels be between sly passers-by facing the abyss. And the foot is the head. <coughs> Where's my felt hat now? And the sky rolls. A car crash. It's not clear here why Sempedrin felt compelled to revise jocularity. I admit that. As far as we can see or assess, there was no need for such a revision. We refute. We refute. We refute. Well, what exactly? Well, this act makes the mouth hurt. Scribbled in the margin of San Pedrin's notebook on the page where this poem is penned, we found this, I found this. A rose, a rose is a rose is a rose, a rose is not repetition. <laughs> Scribbled into the margin of San Pedrin's notebook. <laughs> I inverted it. I had to sit on a pen and write with a rock. The crashing sky, my roost. Language of translation roots in the factory, textiling text. Railway tracks cross, uncross this junction. Dangling legs over a cliff's abyss, children are innocent. In the perfect instance, language is a bridge. You, on the bridge, bird soaring. Are we game? <laughs> the sole poem worth reading in the original appears to be this one, A Gaming Lesson, by Juan Avasilicoy. The rest of the poem is a prank. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.